live. Awesome. Okay, well, thanks everyone for joining us today. I'm Stephanie Rennie, Director of Operations at the Tri-Cities Chamber of Commerce. Uh, through the midst of COVID-19, we've been the voice of business in the Tri-Cities advocating for business supports and relief um, on your behalf. And if you have any questions about what's going on or if you need any additional support, please give us a call or shoot me an email. Uh, we're here for you. Uh, we've also started a support local campaign to help drive business into our local economy. And through that, we also uh, were lucky enough to team up with Aaron and Strive to bring this Explore Local webinar series to you, which is just a fun, different, upbeat way to showcase local business. Um, so with that, I'd like to turn it over to our host, Aaron Binstock from Strive Health and Performance. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, yeah, so for those of you who don't know me, I'm uh, Dr. Aaron Binstock. I'm a chiropractor and co-owner of Strive Health and Performance. And we're just located in Coquitlam at Austin and Nelson across from the newer Safeway. And we also have physiotherapists here, registered massage therapists. Um, we also have kinesiologists who do active rehab. And we specialize in concussion management as well. Uh, we are currently taking uh, new patients, ICBC, WorkSafe. Uh, although they're not in person, we are doing them virtually. Uh, we can talk about that later. But uh, on to today. Um, thank you, Stephanie. And as she said, yes, um, this is all about supporting local. Um, so we really appreciate everyone tuning in live. And if you watch the recorded version, uh, we just wanted to find a way to a, help local businesses who are struggling right now, just get them out there in front of your guys' faces and basically bring what the Tri-Cities has to offer to your home since we're all stuck at home and provide a little fun entertainment as well, give some prizes away. So uh, thank you for the Chamber for teaming up with me and making this all possible. Um, this is exciting stuff. So today we've got Alex from Innovative Fitness Coquitlam. Um, my relationship goes back with him years ago. Uh, he used to work at the Port Moody location. I also worked in Port Moody. Uh, so I have a good relationship with him and it's kind of interesting. We both kind of opened up our own practices around the same time. So we've really helped each other out. Uh, we send patients there, they send pa their clients here. Uh, they have a lot of awesome things to offer, which we're going to touch on today. So. Um, at the end of it, we're going to be giving away, well, I shouldn't say we, Alex is generously giving away a one month personal training, uh, through their new IF virtual platform, IF direct. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Cause that's a pretty awesome prize. Um, Alex, I just kind of want you to introduce yourself, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself and what IF is all about, and then we'll get into some other fun stuff. Um, he's going to show us some exercises that we can do as well. Um, so Alex, take it away. Sweet. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, welcome, everybody. Yeah, my name is Alex. Um, I'm the managing partner at Innovative Fitness in Coquitlam. Uh, we're located just inside of Planet Ice Coquitlam. So right as you come over the Portman Bridge, you see that bright blue building with the planets floating around it. There's four sheets of ice and us located in there. Um, and we specialize in premium personal training. So one-on-one -on -one and two-on-one -on -one training. Uh, but one of the things that that IF Coquitlam does slightly differently is we've always focused on uh, team training, athletic tr uh, performance as well. Um, but also, like Aaron mentioned, uh, we, do, we do refer back and forth with, with Strive um, and we do offer active rehab as well. So we are, most of our, our population is general health and wellness. Uh, so what we'll get into at the end is a little bit of the stuff we commonly see and what can help many of you out day to day. Um, yeah, I've been with IF since probably about 2012. Um, like Aaron mentioned, we were both working in Port Moody, and that's where our relationship started, uh, working back and forth, helping uh, all of our clients lead healthier, more active, pain-free lives. So, so um, that's awesome. One of, the, one of the unique things about IF, too, though, that um, I'm not sure if a lot of people know is uh, you guys do a lot of things with your clients outside the gym um, and obviously right now that's not happening but I'm sure moving forward once we're back in the space and things have changed for the better uh, in terms of us being able to ease restrictions this will become part of what you guys do so can you just describe a little bit about what else you guys are offer and what I'm talking about with some of the trips that you guys go on with your clients totally so 
One of the, the big things that really drew me to IF and that really separates us is we do uh, what we call destination training. Um, it can range anything from you know, doing a, a local 10K running event or a cycling event in the Okanagan or uh, a marathon, triathlon, or even just a travel trip. Um, we've had groups go and do things like hike the Grand Canyon, hike Machu Picchu, uh, as some of our more sort of casual, uh, casual trips, um, and everything up to some of the more extreme where we've had people actually, uh, one of my business partners actually ran across the Sahara Desert in, I think it was five or six days. Um, so that becomes the focus of all, all of our clients' training. They have they obviously come to us with goals like uh, moving better, feeling better, weight loss, um, and attaching an external destination to that really makes the training a lot more uh, attain or, um, accountable. It adds a lot an accountability factor to that um, and helps motivate them. Um, you know, when you have a goal of, of seeing what, a, what number the scale spits out, it can become a little bit tedious. So when you have that big goal, like I'm going to Hawaii to run a marathon, um, it's time sensitive, it's challenging, it pushes you, and at the end, the scale is going to read hopefully what, uh, what you're looking for at the end. So it kind of becomes a byproduct of it. And so they're obviously, they're obviously going to get a lot of physical gains and goals out of that. Um, but, but I feel like it also adds a lot more to it, right? Like whether it's personal connections, um, I don't know if you want to call it spiritual, mental, like mm -hmm. is there any other gains in particular people can, can get from these types of trips with you guys? Totally. I think uh, the biggest one you already you mentioned right there is the, the relationship side of it. Um, I mean, I'm fortunate enough to have clients training with me at Coquitlam um, that I've had since I started as a coach in Port Moody, which is going on eight years. Um, so there are definitely relationships formed, um, whether it's, you know, between coach and client, or maybe you have two clients that train together at the same time. Um, you know, there's also a lot of uh, business that takes place in the studio, right? And there's a in both the Port Moody and Coquitlam studios, there's lots of business owners that work there or that train there. Um, and they train at the same time and they end up uh, collaborating or passing business back and forth to each other. So there's, there's definitely different levels of, uh, of relationships that can be formed there. Um, so it, it really creates a very dynamic uh, environment to be part of. Yeah, that, that was, like I said, that's one of the things when I first heard about you guys and we first started forming a relationship, uh, I was just, I was, so excited about those types of trips that you guys do because I love to do that. But um, again, times are different right now. So how, how have you guys evolved with this pandemic, right? Like how are you still offering your services? What is it you're doing? Yeah, so seeing as our service usually requires us being in person, um, it's very difficult, in, if not impossible to do that right now. Um, so what we've come up with, it's sort of, um, and as it happened, and we're, we've created a virtual, a virtual training platform where we're still able to create a high-level uh, training service for our clients, um, help, them, help them continue to, to work towards their goals, maintain their health, uh, their physical wellness, um, but also maintain those relationships and create that interpersonal connection that uh, through many of these closures, we don't get anymore. Um, so, you know, we're still interacting with our clients directly. It's different from um, some of the, the, the larger platforms like Peloton or, um, you know, any of the, the P90X sort of group stuff where that's a, a one-way interaction where the, the client logs in, does the work. They may be doing it with 10,000 people from around the world, but they're not able to interact with them as well. With this, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one, -on -one, you still have that direct dialogue. If I was to train... Uh, you, Aaron, and, and any one of your, your uh, practitioners, we can have that dialogue going at the same time where you can see them, you can see me. We can, it's just as if we're training in the same room, even though we're all in three, in three different rooms. Yeah. So it maintains that, that really connected uh, aspect of, of the training that many of our clients uh, like and, and seek us out for. Well, and plus that's pretty important as well for not only making sure people are doing proper form so they're not injuring themselves or obviously that one way through Peloton, for instance, they can't, you know, they can't provide that feedback. And so, yeah. um, you know, you're also able to push them properly that, you know, other ways they can't, right? Um, and and your, your platform is different than what a lot of other people are doing as well. You know, you're not just going through Zoom or FaceTime. You guys have 
built your own full on platform, right? Totally. Yeah. So I'll give you a quick preview of it right now. Um, so like, like I uh, mentioned, we've, we've gone to a, uh, a local, um, programmer and they've created what we've called IF direct. So what this is, is it's based on the zoom, uh, design where it's more, um, it's a web-based platform. Uh, but like you said, there's more two, three, four way interaction. It's not, uh, and it's, it, it's more optimized for movement, whereas Zoom only shows us maybe from the chest up. This is optimized to capture uh, everything the camera sees, compress it, and, and provide it in such a manner that not only can the client see what the coach is doing accurately, but the coach uh, can see what the client is doing and allow the coach to actually get in there and really, um, really work on the, the form and uh, make sure that the client is doing things in a safe manner avoiding injury um, and, uh, and progressing. Sorry, can you go back to that for a second and just make it full screen? Just so people can get a true appreciation of what that looks like. And side note, while he's doing that, I forgot to say, if anyone has any questions along the way for Alex or myself, uh, feel free to throw them in the chat and I can put you on mic to ask, or if you're shy, I will ask for you. <clears throat> there we go. So yeah, there's a, uh, it's, it's a very similar look and feel uh, where, you know, you can mute, uh, mute yourself so you don't have background music um, or any background noise. There, there are some, some options to also change the, the size of the, of the screen. So if you want to have, uh, as you can see, the coach is in the middle of the screen here. Um, if you wanted to, if it's not optimal, he can move himself to the corner. You can really play around with where everyone uh, fits in onto the screen. Um, we've also added several layers of, of uh, protection into this, so it is encrypted. Uh, we were approved by ICBC to provide uh, telehealth or active rehab services as well. So initially when this pandemic hit, there was a lot of concern over uh, the stability of the, if a, a public meeting space didn't have a password or wasn't protected. Um, people were able to, to jump in and, you know, do God knows what. Yeah. Um, so this is protected. There is le levels of encryption there. Um, and we've also uh, added the ability to sync it with your own personal calendar and provide reminders. So when our, our front desk administrators set up the sessions, it'll send an email to the client with one click, they can add it to their calendar. And then 30 minutes before the session, it'll remind that, that uh, client, you have a session with so-and-so, uh, it'll provide the link right there. Um, and it'll even send a text message as well. So whether you, you want to use your phone, your tablet, your, your laptop, whatever, you have that link right there. Once the session's done, the only people that have access to it are the clients and the coach. And once that session's done, that link is obsolete. So there's no way that someone could recreate that link, uh, jump on again and, and use it again. Uh, and there's another example too of a client uh, trained from her, her home. Um, so that's more of a one-on-one -on -one setting as well. Uh, and again, it allows us to maintain that high level of personalization um, and interaction with, you know, any equipment that the person may or may not have. Uh, this client has a, by the looks of it, pretty decent setup. They've got a bench and dumbbells and a nice open space. Uh, but as you can tell from my previous screen, I'm in my living room. So there's not so much uh, space to work with. You have to be very efficient and, and aware of that. Um, and it's the, clo the closest approximation that we can we can create to have that interaction and that high level training service, just like, as you would coming into uh, one of our studios. So true or false, if someone wants to do personal training through this, uh, they need all kinds of equipment at their home. Are you frozen? Yeah, no, I'm right here, sorry. I was just going out of full screen. Go ahead, Aaron. Oh, sorry. So I said, I said true or false. If someone wants to do some training with you through this platform, they need uh, a lot of gym equipment at their home. Absolutely not. Um, you can have uh, many of our clients have been doing a lot of different uh, styles of body weight training. Um, we've been doing, uh, you know, very, very minimal equipment requirements as well. A like band, a dumbbell, um, you know, Re reusable shopping bags full of soup cans can work as well. Um, even uh, towel workouts, you can use towels to modulate the resistance for your own uh, drills. It's all about being creative. 
So this obviously came really fast for all of us. Um, you guys looks like you have a really cool platform. Um, can you kind of give us a little, uh, I don't know, behind the scenes look, so to speak, of what the war room was like for you guys to come up with this? And I don't know, like don't, a little bit of a time and like, how do, you, how do you fit all this together? We're making sure that, you know, your, your coaches slash employees are taken care of. Um, the quality of what you guys are going to deliver is is good so that therefore your community is taken care of. Um, can you, so yeah, I just a little expand sure. on that. Yeah, it was, it was a roller coaster. Um, flashback to the middle of March, we had a leadership call on, I believe it was the 10th. And we were, so, we were, we'd, we'd already adapted our training studios to make sure that we were taking the necessary precautions to reduce uh, contact to things like doors, entranceways. Uh, and we'd increase our, our cleaning practices. We increased social distancing practices amongst our coaches and clients. Um, so we, we'd already had some, some reasonable measures in place to make sure that everyone was staying safe. And then by around the 10th, we said, okay, well, we're going to have to revisit this uh, at the beginning of the week. And we, in all likelihood, it looks like we will be closing down. Uh, flat, fast forward about two days. Uh, that was, uh, I think, on a Wednesday. Friday hit, and it, we could see a, a spike. Sunday hit, and we met as an as a ownership and leadership team and said, you know what, this is uh, really picking up steam quickly. We need to be proactive about this. We can't sit back and just let this happen and hope that we get through this. Let's, let's lead by example as we, as we try to always do. Um, so we made the call right then and there on a Sunday afternoon to close all 12 of our locations, um, which was a tough decision. It was a really scary decision for a lot of us because what do we do? None of us have, have been through this before. Our first priority is making sure that our, our teams are, are supported and taken care of. And when you have in the neighborhood of 200 employees in our coaches and, and support staff, like that's a lot of people to take care of. So we made a decision to close and we also made a decision to support our, our employees uh, while we pivoted the business. So for the first week that we were closed, our coaches were being were, uh, compensated uh, to make sure that they had the support they needed. And as a leadership team, we met like, three, four times a day to try and discuss different options. And uh, this was the most viable option. Um, There's a lot of the free stuff that was being thrown out there. And again, it didn't have, while it was great that it provides uh, the physical challenge for people, it didn't provide the uh, interaction, which is what we wanted to have. So we needed to fast track. This was kind of a, a project of ours that we had for later in the year. We fast tracked it um, and we held a meeting, I think uh, we closed on Monday. So we had a, a company-wide meeting on Friday, said to our coaches, we're back, this is how we're doing it, um, who's, who's in? And an overwhelming amount of our coaches raised their hands and stepped up to the plate. Right now, I believe we have about 85% of our uh, coaches are providing IF Direct. So then we moved to the next stage, which was making sure that everyone was trained and up to date on it because Training virtually is a lot different than uh, training in person. You can't move around someone. You can't like ha help someone contact and feel where they're supposed to be doing it. So we practiced for the better part of a week and a half to make sure that we had this down pat. We navigated through the technology, made sure that uh, before sessions we were checking in with our clients to make sure they knew how to log in. We knew what kind of equipment they had. We knew what kind of space they had and that we can provide a high quality session uh, as they're accustomed to in person. And then once the session hit, they got their, their full hours worth of training. Um, and then by the 20, I think by March 30th, we were going. So call it a week and a half of a, of a pivot. And we, we launched our live platform. Um, and it's been upwards ever since. Uh, I think we started with about, our goal in Pocotlin was about 30% adoption. And we started with 40 and now we're at about 50%. And I believe company wide, we're about 45% adoption rate. So clients have been really, uh, really supportive of this. Um, they're, you know, they're, they're really, really buying in and the coaches have knocked it out of the park. I mean, uh, I get trained by my coaches on a regular basis and it's harder here than it is in the gym. And I've got three kettlebells and a set of dumbbells. I feel like I have a lot of equipment and they, put me through the ringer and I finished going, this is harder than it is in the studio. 
So I, it's definitely, uh, definitely di uh, different, but it's been um, a very positive change where we've all been more creative, uh, very adaptable, flexible, um, and it's, it's proving to make for some really great success stories. So um, I, I, I think you guys, you know, see, a, you guys see a lot of athletes, um, but I think it's important to know that you don't just see athletes, right? Like you guys probably see a lot of uh, a huge range. So aside from athletic injuries, what would you say is kind of one of the more common things that you would see in terms of injuries or health issues? Uh, well, being that most of our clients are business owners, um, you know, everyone works a very long, long week and usually in very, very static positions. Unfortunately, this position is our, our common, common day to day position. Majority of who we see, like I said, is uh, uh, working adults between the ages of 35 to 65. Um, and the most common set of issues that we see, Aaron, you'll be really familiar with this, is upper and lower cross syndrome. So that's typically caused when you're in a seated position like this and the muscles on the front side of your body go into a contracted state and it inhibits the ones on the back side. And what ends up happening is not only you feel soreness and tightness, but that can lead to compensations and further injuries. So many of our clients like to do uh, weekend activities like mountain biking, running, boating, kayaking, whatever, uh, making sure that they're staying healthy and, and we're avoiding those injuries is, is super key. So. Uh, a lot of mobility usually comes into play, and uh, we can go over some of that too, if you want. Yeah, so as you mentioned, obviously, upper cross is a very common thing that um, a lot of us probably experience. Maybe some of us don't know that we experience it. Um, so let's, let's give the people here watching a little bit of a physical demonstration. Is give, let's give a couple exercises or things you would take someone through to help alleviate or prevent those types of injuries slash you know, strain. For sure. So to give you a, a good visual again, so when we're talking about upper cross, if I'm sitting here at my workstation, often I'm kind of in this position here where my upper back is rounded, my shoulders are, are pulled forward. And typically I get a, this a little bit exaggerated, but I get a bit of a neck poke like that. So what we want to try and do is open up uh, some of the chest muscles and the and muscles around the shoulders and the neck. So a really simple one, first and foremost, is just a, a, a seated neck stretch for your upper trapezius muscles. So typically you'll see people take uh, one hand, reach across and try and force the head to the side. I prefer not to do that, but the way I do it is I'll tilt my head to the side and I'll use my hand to stabilize it there. And then I'll use my free hand to reach down towards the floor. So now I'm not putting any unnecessary force on my cervical vertebrae. Uh, and I'm just reaching down and you feel the stretch right here through, through your upper trapezius muscles. Uh, so a common, a common and, question, sorry, I just want to interrupt for one second. A common question, uh, you know, I'll get, and I'm sure you get is, and for people who are watching is how hard should I make that stretch, right? Like, should it hurt? Should it feel super tight? Like what, what, what would you say? I typically like to go on a, uh, an RPE strain, so a rate of perceived exertion. Um, I wouldn't go any more than say a four or a five. It should be, you should feel a stretch, but it shouldn't be painful, right? Um, depending on how, on how severe any sort of tightness restriction is, it might feel a bit more, you might have to back off a little bit. Um, so I try and go in that, you know, four or five out of 10 range. Um, and again, another question I get too is how long do you hold it for? Um, again, I don't like to go for, for length of time. I try and create breathing cycles. So the more oxygen I can get into the blood, uh, the easier the, the oxygen can get to that, those muscles and relax. So I'll try and go for a, like a breathing cycle of maybe five to 10 deep breaths as well. So you, you're, you're holding it as you take? I'm holding here and then I'm taking slow deep breaths in. If I go short little breaths, I'm not maximizing each, each breath. So just slow, short breaths, sorry, long deep breaths. <laughs> maybe five to 10, depending on how tight you are, and then relax, let the blood flow back out of the muscles, do the other side, do it as necessary. Typically for every about 40 minutes of, of static uh, seated position, you should be doing about two minutes of stretching, give or take. Is it practical? No, but if you can do some, it's better than nothing. All right, and do you have uh, maybe a little bit more of a dynamic, more mobile type of exercise you can provide? Totally. This is one of my favorites. Um, just changing my angle here a little bit. So 
Part of upper and lower cross is also uh, pertaining to the hips. So when we're sitting and our hips are in flexion, they can become tight as well. So one drill that I like to do is putting uh, one hip into extension so that my hip is straight and getting my glutes to activate. Part of stretching should be activating afterwards. Uh, once you stretch one set of muscles out, if you can activate the other side, that'll prevent them from becoming uh, chronically tight again. So this stretch that I like to do, I just call them uh, half kneeling wall sweeps. I'll go right up against the wall. Depending on, on your level of mobility, you may need to come farther off the wall. Uh, but my outside leg is down, so my left leg or left hip is straight, and my inside knee is right up against the wall. From there, I'm going to take my palm against the wall, and I'm going to sweep all the way up and back as far as I can go without letting my my torso turn too much. So I wanna try and keep my palm on the wall just to about from uh, or parallel with the floor and then bring it all the way back down. So having my legs against the wall stabilizes my hips so I can't compensate and rotate. And then staying closer to the wall really forces me to get my spine into extension, stretch through my pecs, my shoulders, all the way back. And of course, trying to breathe normally as I go all the way through that motion. I like that. I've, I've never seen that one, but if you would, could you give a modification? Um, sorry to put you on the spot here, uh, but if someone has a shoulder problem or just doesn't generally have that range, um, do you have any recommendations as to how they could potentially modify that a bit, whether they're just... Same position. Uh, this time, instead of going up and around, we're gonna lengthen the, uh, the pecs and open up the chest and your thoracic Fine. Same idea. This time we're going to have our arms straight out front and we're going to do an open book drill. So again, I'm stabilizing the hips on the wall so I can't compensate. And now I'm just trying to open up uh, towards my posterior side. All the way back and then closing through. So right here, I'll take a breath in. I'll exhale as I open, follow my hand as I go all the way back. And then inhale again. If you wanted to make, if you're somewhere in between, you could try and change your position so that you have your opposite foot forward. So now I'm getting a little bit more counter mobility through my thoracic spine, uh, and then progress up to the, the sweeping motion. And do you have a recommendation for how many reps people should do? Uh, usually between five to eight is sufficient. Um, you don't want to go go too crazy with it if you're brand new into into a movement like that. That would aggravate any of the uh, smaller stabilizing muscles in your shoulders and neck. Um, so generally in that range of five to eight, again, it just need, as long as you're doing it regularly, uh, it's, that's ideal, a couple times a day, um, and maintaining that, that uh, comfort range between like a, a three to a five or a four to five out of 10 intensity. Sweet. Um, so we are gonna wrap up pretty soon here. If, um, I'm gonna get Alex to share some information, uh, contact information, but if anyone has any questions, uh, any exercises that they may wanna know of, uh, any more demonstrations, now's your time to, to ask away. Uh, so Alex, if you can just pull it, yeah, I guess you're gonna pull up your contact information. So um, once it's up, you know, take a screenshot, so you have it. I mean, these, these videos will be posted uh, both on uh, the Strive Health and Performance website as well as the Chamber Facebook page. Um, I think also on the Chamber website too. So they will be available, but um, just take a picture or a screenshot. If you want to contact him, follow them on Instagram. Um, there we go. There you go. Um, yeah, so there's our... The Coquitlam email, so if you wanted to get a hold of myself, uh, you can email Coquitlam at innovativefitness.com. Um, as I mentioned, we do also have a studio in Port Moody, um, so it's Port Moody at Innovative Fitness as well. Um, or you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, uh, check out our, our, our website as well. There's lots of information there on different studios, different offerings, um, all, all that. All the information that you need to know will be on there as well too. So. Awesome. All right. Um, so we're going to do the draw for the prize. Um, we got a couple of people dropping out here. So um, you got to be present to win the prize. Can you stop sharing your screen? Yeah. Is that possible? There you go. Thank you. And then I'm just going to quickly throw something up here before we draw for the prize. Um, so 
Um, again, if, um, if anyone has any questions at all about any type of injuries, um, nothing injury related, you want to just chat, you can call our hotline 778-355-3050. Um, you can check out future webinars. We are still going strong two a week. Um, Strivehontheperformance.ca slash webinars. You can also go to the Chambers event page to register. Everything is free. Uh, Friday, we have a clinical counselor from Strawberry and Sunshine Clinic, and she is going to address some mental health stuff. We're going to talk about how to deal with our anxiety and stress that we've been dealing with from being so isolated and all these changes. Next week on Tuesday, we're going to have Vino Zen. He's going to do a wine tasting class for us. Uh, again, this is all free. And then later on in the week, we have Shannon from Lift Fitness. She's going to basically go through some fun and creative ways to keep your kids busy and active at home so they don't drive you crazy. Um, and if you have any suggestions for future topics, reach out to me. Uh, reach out to Stephanie from the Chamber. We will do our best to get it going. Please, if you've enjoyed this or any other ones, keep watching and keep sharing uh, the information with uh, anyone else that might be interested. So um, now for the draw, Stephanie will make sure this person is here. I am not in the list here, although I want to be. I think it's just frowned upon. Susan Sui, is she here? No, ooh, sorry, <laughs> Susan. All right. Francesca, nope, all right. Lori, is there a Lori here? No. Nope. nope, all right. Everyone's still alive. How about Karen? Is there a Karen? I don't see a Karen. I did see a Karen, but Ooh, not anymore. She's gonna be upset that she left. Alan Brown. He's here. Alan Brown, you are the winner. So um, I will let you reach out to uh, Alex and I can give him your email address as well. Alex, do you know who Alan Brown is? I don't believe him yet, no. All right. So I'll, I'll give you his email. Um, and uh, Alan Brown, you can also reach out to Alex if you would like, but you are the winner. Okay. Thank you, uh, Alex, for coming on. I appreciate your time and effort. Um, good luck, obviously, moving forward here. Thanks, everyone, again, for tuning in. Hope to see everyone on Friday. Uh, very important topic. And, yeah, stay safe. And hopefully we get back to somewhat normal soon. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Take care, everyone. Take care.